Today, we're gonna be reviewing the Rokinon 35mm f1.4. Now, I love this lens a lot, but there are some bad things, and I'm gonna start telling you the bad things right now. Actually, it's not really about the lens, it's more about me. And that is, I already have a 14mm lens, and I have a 24mm lens, and now I have a 35mm lens. The 24 and the 35 really conflict each other. And, uh, I mean, some people like the 24 and the 30. Fuck you. That scared me. Okay. The 24 and the 35 are really close. But some people like to keep both of the these lenses because they are drug dealers and they have a whole bunch of money. But I'm broke. So, I have to choose. The 24 millimeter f1.4. And I will be selling my 35 millimeter shortly. Because, you know, they're sort of the same. And instead of keeping this lens, I'm going to go buy a 50 millimeter lens. And I'm going to tell you right now, this video is being shot on the A6300 with the 14 millimeter lens. And in between the lens and the camera is an adapter. Uh, I would do some B-roll, but then I would have to use my phone and then proxy file that, then put it in the video. And that didn't sound like a lot of work, but for my lazy ass, that's way too much work. I forgot what I was talking about. Holy shit. I'm just going to want to have a 14, a 24, and a 50 millimeter lens. Those are the three lenses that I'm going to pretty much need. And I can knock out any project with those three lenses, pretty much. Unless it's a movie, I might want to rent to Red Epic. Why do I keep getting sidetracked? I'm so dumb. Not really, but yeah, I am, I guess. Okay. The bad thing about this lens is uh, spec-wise, feature-wise, use-wise... There's not much wrong with this lens. I think other than it not being auto, I mean, it's a completely manual lens, no autofocus, no auto anything. You have to even do the aperture manually, which you do know with all the Rokinon lenses. But the thing is they're sharp and they have a very wide aperture and you get that low light performance that you need. So at the expense of automate, automated features, you do get the core features that you need with a lens and if you know how to work around that then this lens is perfect but not for me i do have the 24 i just said that but i do have some test videos and i'm gonna play them for you right now go do it Yeah, you can see that the lens performs very well in many types of lighting and sharpness is really good and the test video was mostly shot wide open and I did have an ND filter on top that could be taken away sharpness. I have not done extensive testing on it because it is an ND filter from Best Buy and it was $60 so it wasn't cheap, but I'm going to buy a B plus W variable ND filter and it's going to be coming shortly and I'm not going to do a review because I only get nine fucking views so fuck you but the good things about this lens is like I said it's a f1.4 lens so you get that shallow depth of field and since it's 35 it's relatively wide but not sort of cropped like a 50 and FYI if you have a crop sensor camera I'd recommend you not get the 50 millimeter and instead get the 35 because you don't have to back up to fucking Mars to get a wide shot. That's really annoying with these, uh, you know, the 50 millimeter lens on an APS-C. I started on the T3i and the 50 millimeters was pretty much impossible to use indoors. It was possible, but it was a hassle. Except when you're outdoors, it's fine because you know you have a limited space pretty much and you can get what you want. Also, this lens is quite sharp, wide open. And that's the case with most Rokinon lenses. Even at f1.4, it's sharp as shit. And, but when you do go to like f, you know, 11 to 22, it does start to lose sharpness, but that's with any lens because of diffraction. I don't really know what diffraction is. I kind of do. It's like when you put the pencil in water. That's diffraction, but I don't know the mathematics and physics that involve the fucking lens. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. 
I'm kidding, I go to Harvard and Yale at the same time, so I'm brighter than you. There's not a lot of chromatic aberration unless there's some strong backlighting. And that's pretty much normal for any lens. I'm not gonna complain about it. It's still a very good lens and I can't, I don't really, it's not bad. What else is good about this lens? Distortion. Distortion isn't that bad at all. Um, you can't really tell that there is distortion. It's so minimal. And in Lightroom, you can take this distortion right out. So that's okay. But for videos, I don't actually know how to take distortion out. I would like to learn. It's a good lens. I'm not going to go pixel people about this lens. It's a top performer right here. I love this lens, but it's not perfect for me. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to end this review with a... Bye, bitch.